Well, welcome everyone to our worship this morning. I'm, I'm glad to see all of you here. Uh, I have seen that there's uh, at least a couple of different visitors that I hadn't met before that are visiting with us, and I want to welcome you, and I'm glad to see you here, and especially uh, glad to see Yori here is a uh, great, good friend of Dan's, and, and glad that he would join us today and, and perform with us. So with that, I will turn it over to May, and we will have our call to worship. Will you join me in the call to worship? Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Please stand as you are able as we sing our opening hymn, uh, page 127, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. young ones this morning? I think we've got one. <laughs> and, and he is looking like he wants to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. You want to come up here? Talk to me for a minute? Hey. You, got, you got some cookies, some crackers, yeah. chocolate chip. Crackers? Are they good? Mm. You like those? Can you sit down? <laughs> you can sit down. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. There we yeah. Go. Mm. What, what kind of crackers are those? You know? Show them your crackers. Color. Yeah. Color. They taste good? No. No, you can't touch the flowers. What are you, what's your big plans for this weekend? So we're going to play outside. You're going to play outside? Yeah. You're going to play on the jungle gym? Go swing? We're going to swing. Yeah. Yeah. You like to go swing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Swinging is fun, isn't it? I bet that's one of those things that you really look for mommy to push you. You want to give me a cracker? Thank you. 
good you know, that's one of the things we're going to talk about in our sermon today, about sharing with one yes, another, too. You're, a, you're good at sharing, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you go so you can go have uh, your nurture, nursery time. <laughs>
Our scripture reading for today is from 1 John 3, 11 through 24. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so I want to point out some facts from this this passage and you may say well it's all fact true um, but a couple of key facts I think that come out of this passage the first one is Paul tells the church there in Corinth that they have passed from death into life and we may think well yeah that's eternal life and that'll happen at some point in the future we're wrong if we think that. Eternal life has already started. If it didn't, how would it be eternal? Eternal means no beginning, no end. We have already passed out of death into life. Today we live in life. We do not live in death. We've already passed that. The second thing that, that he says in this passage is, the world will hate you. It's a fact. Why? Because evil hates good. So if you're good, if you're following Christ, the world's going to hate you. Meaning the general world. Maybe not your individual families, but there will be people in the world that hate you. It's a known fact. Evil hates good. He also says that God is in us. And he tells us that God sent his son to be our perfect sacrifice. That's another fact, right? Jesus died for us, a fact. He died to, to relieve us of our sins, to eliminate our sin. Now, having said that, that doesn't mean we continue to go on in sin, but Jesus came and died so that our sins can be forgiven. Paul goes on to tell the church in Corinth to love one another, and in fact, he goes on to say, look, if you have material possessions and a brother or sister has a need, it is your responsibility to provide for them. Now, remember, Paul is writing, or rather, John is writing here. John is writing to the, the people in the church. He's writing to the body of Christ. He's not writing to the Roman cohorts in Jerusalem. He's not writing to the hordes of, of, of 
Gentiles that don't believe anything in him. He's writing to the people that believe in Christ, that have committed to Christ, and are part of the body of Christ. And he says, if you have a brother or sister that's in Christ and has a need, and you have the means to provide for that need, you have a responsibility to provide for them. Now, John does not say anything about the rest of the world. And I think we can go in other places in Scripture that says, yes, we should go ahead and take care when we can of other people in need in this world. But first and foremost, we're to take care of the body of Christ. There are people that belong to Christ that are part of this body in this world that are in dire need today. Whether it's the people that are down along the Gulf Coast who are recovering from a flood again, from a hurricane again. And I know what that devastation looks like firsthand. I went there after Katrina for a week and spent time there. I know what that looks like. And I know how badly they need help. And I'm thankful that there are thousands of people going down there to help them. But we are to take care of that body of Christ. And we're, the, the other people that we know right off the top of our head that are suffering right now are the Christians in Afghanistan. Think about what it would look like if every Christian in this world were banded together. Is there any way that the Taliban or Al-Qaeda could stand against it? I don't think so. Every Christian, every brother and sister has uh, a, a responsibility to help other brothers and sisters. That's what John is telling us in this. And we do it because we love one another. And we have this love because God first loved us. And we have this love because Christ died for us, who was a perfect example of love, perfect example of laying down his life for us. How do we know that we have this love? Well, John makes it very clear there towards the end of the passage. He says, because God's spirit lives in us. And his spirit tells us that we're loved and that we are to share this same love with our fellow brothers and sisters. Love comes in, in many forms. But the love that John's talking about is not the emotional, good feeling love. It's not the puppy love that we think about when we think about teenagers. It's not any of that. It's a committed love. It's one that commits because they care for one another. It's a committed love in caring. It's a committed love in doing. It's an actionable love. It requires action. We can't merely say, well, I love you. We see that in other passages, right, where we're told, well, if James tells us, if you tell someone, well, I love you and, and I'm concerned about your well-being, but I do nothing to help you. Well, that's not faith. That's not love. Love takes action. John says that if we don't take action, then we, are, we don't show love. He also tells us that we are not to hate. We could probably point to a lot of hate going on in this world right now. Even in our own country. How many factions and how many different Arguments are going on and people hating one another over some of the most minutest things. Some are very, very big things as well. But we, if we hate one another, John says it's like being a murderer. 
And you may think that's rather harsh. But I think Jesus would tell you that it's not. Why? Because hate is a sin. Murdering is a sin. Both cost him his life. Love did not cost Jesus anything. If we all loved him and did exactly what we were told, it wouldn't have cost him anything. Unfortunately, as human beings, we fail. That doesn't mean we shouldn't get back up and try again. So how do we know if we're going to love in Christ, if we do actually love in Christ? And that is if we know that the Spirit is there in us and the Spirit is guiding us. That's how we know if we're loving in Christ. If we're not moving and loving in Christ, then it's a false love. Or we're lying to ourselves, if we're telling ourselves that. And that's where he talks about, well, if our heart condemns us. If our heart condemns us, he says, God is greater than that. Well, our heart may condemn us and say, look, you're not loving the way you need to love. You're not truly loving the way Christ wants you to love. And that may be true for that particular moment. But if in our hearts we truly want to do that, even if we fail at times, God is greater than our heart and he forgives us for those failures. So don't let guilt hang around in your life. If you know deep down you really want to follow God, then you also know and should trust that God will forgive you. And so there's no need to hold on to that guilt. Yes, your heart may condemn you, say, I should have done that better, or I should have done that differently, or I should do all of this differently. But at the same time, know that God forgives you for those failures and then let the guilt go away and turn right back into loving as Christ loved. Loving in him, taking action and committing to love as he did. Take care of one another, love one another, do for one another. Do for the body of Christ. Do for the brothers and sisters in Christ. That's loving in Christ. And that's what John is telling us here today. He told, he told the Christians that he wrote to that message. And he's telling us today that that's how we love in Christ. Is by loving one another and caring for one another. It's action. If you would bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that we sometimes fail, and probably far more than we would like to admit. But God be with us. You know our hearts. You know that we, that, that we strive to be more like your son, and, and God, we ask for your forgiveness in those times of failure. We also ask that you fill us with your spirit, and, and that he would guide us and, and help us to better love just as your son loved, and that we would put our love into action and care for one another. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. At this time, if you would, please stand and sing as we sing number 2123. Loving Spirit, loving Spirit, you have chosen me to be. You have drawn me to your wonder. You have set your sign on me. Like a mother, you enfold me. Hold my life within your own. Feed me with your very body, for me of your flesh and bone.
You may be seated. We're, uh, at this time, we will partake in our communion, or Lord's Supper. We gather around the table. Uh, unlike what we have done in the past few months, I'm not going to use the liturgy out of the songbook. Um, I like to mix it up and do things a little different from time to time. So today, I want to read for you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. This is instructions that Paul gave to the church in Corinth. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As we think about this particular passage and we think about Paul's instructions to the church in Corinth, something that comes to mind for me about this bread is it was a common bread. There was nothing special about the bread until Jesus blessed it and said, this represents my body. There was nothing special about the wine. In fact, most of the Jews watered down their wine at that particular time because, quite honestly, it was expensive. And that was a common drink for them. And so they would, they would uh, try to make it last for a little longer. But it was common amongst the people. It was nothing special about it until Jesus blessed it and said, this represents my blood that I shed for you. As we partake of this bread and as we partake of this fruit of the vine, we are to remember Christ. And there is a lot to remember about him we can remember that he was the perfect sacrifice for us. We can also celebrate that he was the perfect sacrifice for us. And that may sound odd to some of you, but you see the, when in the sacrificial system there was mourning leading up to the sacrifice and weeping and sadness until the sacrifice was laid on the altar. But once the sacrifice was laid on the altar and it was carried out, there was celebration and joy that it was done. And now you are free from your sin. So yes, I think it's appropriate that we remember with some mourning and some sadness as we partake of this bread and this fruit of the vine. But it's also appropriate that we rejoice and have gladness and celebrate that we're now free from that bondage of sin because of what Jesus did. So if you would take out your wafer and your juice, if you have not already done so. And I'm going to pray over each one of them individually uh, in a way uh, to perhaps imitate what Christ did on that day a couple thousand years ago. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we have this bread that represents the broken body of your Son who sacrificed himself for us. We ask that you bless this bread as we partake of it, that you remind us that he walk this earth, was a perfect example and a perfect sacrifice for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Open up your little container of juice here. And then we will bow over the through the vine. Heavenly Father, as we partake of this fruit of the vine that represents the blood your son shed, 
Remind us that we have been washed white as snow. Remind us that our sins have been removed from us and we have been cleansed. And God, remind us that it is a, an occasion for celebration, for joy, and for thankfulness and for praise to you. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. If you would, please stand again, and we will continue our hymn in number 2123. Like a father, you protect me, teach me the discerning eye. Voice me up upon your shoulder, let me see the world from high. Friend and lover, in your closeness, I am known and held and blessed. In your promise is my comfort, in your presence I may rest. One expression of our love in Christ and for Christ is trust. We have an opportunity to demonstrate our trust in Christ as we offer a portion of our blessings back to him. Thank you.
thankful for all of your many blessings. We're thankful that you have seen fit to bless our nation richly. God, as we make this offering back to carry out your work here on this earth, we ask that you bless this offering, that you uh, bless those who will make the decisions on how to go about executing your plan. God, we ask for your guidance, for your insight, and for your blessing on, on all of our works here. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. A sing hymn number um, 2266, Here's Bread, Here's Wine. me as we pray over our people here. Heavenly Father, we come before you in prayer and in petition, asking for your blessing. We ask for your care over those who may be facing surgeries. We ask for your care over those who are recovering from surgeries and, and that you would bring about health in all of those situations. God, we ask for you to be with those who are battling cancer and COVID and any other disease, that you give them strength and courage to continue their battle. And God, we ask that you would be with all of the medical staff that treat them. God, we ask that you be with those along the Gulf Coast who are continuing to recover from Hurricane Ida. And we ask that you would bring about recovery and healing in their case. Be with them as they go through this and bring people into their areas that can help them with the recovery. God, we also ask that you be with those who are recovering from the floods in the Northeast as they also experienced flooding from Hurricane Ida. God, we ask that you be with those who are helping them and that all of those who are recovering would have the strength and the courage to rebuild as needed. And God, we ask that you be with the people of Afghanistan as they continue their fight for uh, some semblance of freedom. And God, we especially are mindful of those who are Christians there who are facing persecution. We ask that you be with them and give them strength and courage. 
but most of all, God, give them peace. And God, we ask that you be with all of us here, no matter what ailments we may have or worries we may have or anxieties or fears. Relieve us of those. Give us comfort. Give us peace. Give us strength and courage. And most of all, God, give us your spirit to increase our faith, our faith and our love for one another. God, we ask that you be with us now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. As you go this week, go not just with the peace of Christ, but go loving as Christ has loved. Go knowing that you have been freed from death and have tra already transferred into life. Amen. Uh, a few announcements that we have today. Of course, Sunday school starts immediately after uh, service here. We also have our informal worship service on Friday evenings or Saturday evenings here at five o'clock. Um, our welcome back Sunday will continue to uh, to go as planned on September 19th. Pray for good weather. We want to be outside after the worship service is over to enjoy some fun and games and and uh, in, in, invite your friends and neighbors and, and, and family to come and join us on the 19th. Also, uh, beginning on September 22nd, so the Wednesday following our welcome back, we will start our study on the book of Revelation. We will meet here in person, but we will also connect via Zoom. So if you can't be here in person, you can be on Zoom. It will start at 7 p.m. on that Wednesday the September 22nd. Uh, if you want to be in our prayer group and want to receive the weekly prayer lists, uh, we would love to have you. We need more prayer uh, warriors, as some like to say. I, we just need more people praying for everything. But but if you would like to, let me know and send me your email, give me your email address, and I'll ensure you're a part of that group. Continue to like and share on our social media. You hear me say this every week, and I'm going to continue saying it because, you know what? I see out there how many people are liking and sharing. And when I see that we have 350 followers on our Facebook page and we have five likes and shares, I know we're not liking and sharing enough. That's a way to do evangelism in today's world. That's a way to plant seeds. Continue. Like, share out there on social media. <clears throat> Our food box is done, basically. Uh, it should get put up out here uh, this week. We've been cleared by all of the utilities to be able to put it up, so there's nothing in the way uh, utility-wise that we would have any damage hitting, so our food box will be out there at some point this week. The nurture committee will meet Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. here. Our rummage sale will go uh, September 10th and 11th, and then also 24th and 25th. So if you're one of those that would like, if you'd like to help, if you would like to let other people know, certainly do so. Uh, we would like to have a good turnout for that. Um, next weekend, um, likely I will have the liturgists doing these, these um announcements as opposed to me because I'm going to need to leave quickly next week because I have to be in Liberty at 10 o'clock and I'm going to <clears throat> I will be doing the preaching at Liberty community service in the park at 10 o'clock um, so if you are just a glutton for punishment you can come and hear me a second time and enjoy the weather outside. It is supposed to be good weather next weekend. Um, or if you uh, would just like to be a little, to sleep in a little and go to church a little bit later, you can always do that as well. But 
uh, I, I will be there. So if you have friends and family in the Liberty area, the, you know, Richfield, Payson, Beverly, Paloma, whatever, any of those areas, tell them to come out to the Liberty Park and enjoy a community worship out there in the park. Enjoy some nice weather and sunshine. And then, uh, finally, uh, one next starting next Sunday at 8:15, we're going to meet back here behind in the choir room. For if you want to be part of the the, the new choir that we're starting up, then certainly come and join Dan and uh, start doing uh, some practicing and preparing. Hopefully, we will be able to get some uh, a song or two ready and we feel comfortable with in time to perform on the 19th for our Welcome Back Sunday. I believe that's all of our announcements, so go in peace. <laughs>